Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Wiley. I'm here. I hope everybody's enjoying their holiday season. This time of year, I always enjoy it. I have nothing but fond memories of the Christmas season and this year is no different even though 2020 has been a very crazy year. I hope everybody's doing well out there. There is a couple of news bits that I do want to cover so I'm going to cover them on this episode before the next new year starts. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So on the Fuji Rumor website, we do have some rumors about the XE4, which is a camera body that was rumored to be canceled, but it doesn't look like it is going to be canceled. It is going to have the 26 megapixels X trans sensors that we already know about. It's in a lot of camera bodies. It's not going to have the next generation of sensors or processors, which is not surprising because it's really not a top of the line camera body. You would expect a new sensor, a new processor to come out with an X-H2 or the next X-T5. So nothing surprising there. It is a really good camera body. It's never been one that I've been interested in because the X-T series have always been so good, but this one doesn't have a fully articulating screen or at least that's what the rumors say which makes it a much more photocentric camera body which is going to be what a lot of people in the community want so in this case the announcement probably isn't going to be overhyped and there isn't going to be a lot of excitement around it but for anybody who likes the e-series they're going to be really excited that this camera body didn't get canceled but i will keep track of it just in case there is anything exciting that actually gets mentioned with the announcement of the xe4 now moving on to Canon news, there is only one camera lens that I'm really looking forward to, which is the 70 to 200 f4, and mostly because I really like small travel lenses. Something that I've already talked about is that the Canon full frame sensors they've gotten so good nowadays, even though this is an f4 and I lose a stop of light if I don't get the f2.8 version. This is something that really isn't important to me because the ISO range has increased so dramatically for full frame sensors that even in low light situations, I'm actually fairly comfortable with using an f4 lens because again it's a full frame sensor and the iso ranges have increased dramatically it's much more easier nowadays to use an f4 lens even in low light situations and i really like the compact size of this 70 to 200 Generally speaking, when I'm traveling, I like to only carry two lenses with me. One lens that's an ultra wide that I can kind of carry around and just move around from day to day life. And then a telephoto in case I ever need it. And this 70 to 200 right here definitely fits the bill. And of course, since this is an F4 lens, I do save a bit of money, which nowadays that's never a bad thing. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the review on this lens because it's most likely one of the lenses I will be picking up early next year. Moving on to Nikon news, and this is something that I think all of us have seen coming. Nikon has definitely started doubling down on video features on their new mirrorless cameras, and that's because they're getting exposed to a new user market, which means their base of users that they can actually sell to is growing, and that's something that you're going to need to do in this type of economic environment. You're going to have to grow your user base, and one of the easiest ways to do it is to grow into a new market segment. So, we know photography has been shrinking for quite a while now, so going into the video market, really getting some pro features out there like supporting Blackmagic Raw is definitely a good idea because new users are willing to try different things, especially in the video market where everybody's trying to find their own niche. And also, there's a lot of people out there that's trying to find their own video style that they want to use. And using a different camera, a different sensor, and how they process colors is definitely a good way of doing that. So it'll be very interesting to see how many people will take advantage of this black magic raw support but this is something that Nikon should have done years ago which is get a little bit more aggressive in video so that they can actually grow their user base they're finally now getting around to it they are so late to the game that doing aggressive features like this is something that's really important to them because it kind of makes them distinctive it makes them very unique and it's also their willingness to try new things that might be able to win over customers that are already using other people's brands and i really hope nikon finds success doing things like this because it's definitely one of the legacy brands that has a long tradition they make really great products it's just that they haven't really been keeping up with what's going on in the market and i'm really hoping that they have growth and success in 2021 so that we don't see them disappear now having said all of that one of the disappointing news to cover is that they're going to be ending the tradition of manufacturing cameras in japan which is something that probably surprises no one they are moving all of their manufacturing to thailand 
this is kind of disappointing to see because they had such a strong legacy of actually building cameras in Japan. Canon seems to be the only brand left that will be manufacturing some of their camera bodies in Japan, which is one of the reasons why I own a Canon R6 because I do want to support manufacturing in democratic nations. But getting back to the story on the screen here, it is kind of sad to see it, but you can really definitely understand the business reasons in which they do that. I just wanted to bring it up because for some people like myself, that is rather important and it does change my buying habits on which camera brands that I will be continued buying products from. So when this video publishes on YouTube, it will be New Year's Eve. So I hope everybody have a happy new year. I'll see you in 2021. I hope everybody's doing well out there. I hope you're healthy and I'll see you in the next video.